Hi everyone, today we'll talk about held punches in basic drills, developing elbow energy, and the process of mastery. Let's take a look. As a beginner, when you're practicing pakta, tanda, and lapta in basic drills, it's important that you do not fully extend your elbows with the punch. Some may argue that training to hold your punches back is a bad habit, but I'd say that training to fully extend your elbows and keep them there when you're too far to make contact is much worse. And here's why. One, if you keep your elbows straight, you make it easier for your opponent to pull you off balance. When your elbow is bent, however, the angle of your form makes it harder for your opponent to grasp. Two, the hand that strikes becomes the first line of defense, and a straight arm does a very poor job at deflecting attacks. Three, it is much harder to punch with the same arm twice if you leave it fully extended. So if you wanna keep your options open as to which arm you're going to follow up with, keep your elbows bent. Four, a straight elbow is very vulnerable to attacks because it is at the limit of its range of motion. Practitioners who fully extend their elbows in basic drills think that training held punches will cause them to be unable to fully extend their elbows in a real self-defense situation. This is simply not true. We have many other exercises that allow us to train elbow power, such as in all three empty hand forms, while practicing punches and techniques in the air, while doing knuckle push-ups, while practicing on the wall bag, in Mokchong, Yokdim Bunguan, and Pa Chamdo. If you've watched my video on how to punch effectively, you'll know that it's a complex skill that requires more than just extending the elbows. In order to learn it properly, we need to break it down into sub-skills, such as learning to be solid in our stance, to occupy center line, to step into the opponent, to arrive at the ideal striking distance, to coordinate our hands and feet, and to generate power with the hips, the elbows, and the wrists. The purpose of each drill, exercise, and form is to enable us to acquire a specific set of skills through repetition. But you must focus on one skill at a time. If you attempt to learn the entire set of skills of a given exercise at the same time, you'll be really good at being bad at everything. Worse, if you attempt to acquire skills that fall outside of the scope of the exercise, the exercise loses its purpose. At which point to continue to perform it will do more harm than good. This is usually why good exercises end up being needlessly modified or discarded. It is important to note that certain skills overlap between exercises and others don't, and that an exercise can have many iterations and teach a different set of skills depending on your level. Your understanding of the different parts of the system will evolve as you evolve in the system. This is why the way you perform Siulim Tao is not the same way you'll perform it after you've learned Chum Q. And the way you perform Siulim Tao and Chum Q is not the same way you'll perform them after you've learned Biu Zi. If you're learning correctly, you'll begin to see how each Tolo complements the next, where each Tolo connects, and where they each differ from one another. Now going back to basic drills, how exactly should a beginner practice them? When you're chain punching for your partner, you can fully extend your elbows, but make sure to focus on punching straight and staying relaxed. When you're practicing double hand techniques, focus on placing the elbow of the striking arm at, let's call it 130 degrees. Coincidentally, 130 degrees also happens to be the angle at which your knees should be bent in don't worry about power, speed, or making contact for now. Focus only on proper placement and relaxation. The goal here is to develop the muscle memory required for you to be able to hit the 130 degree mark every single time. Later, you will carry these habits into Chisou 
you'll learn that 130 degrees is the optimal angle for redirecting oncoming force into the ground and is also the angle at which your elbow should be bent when your hand makes contact with the target as you strike. Little by little, you'll begin to understand what is meant by Zhang Dai Lei, elbow energy, and Chang Zhang, sinking the elbows, and why all four positions in Luk Sao are done with elbows bent. And by then, whenever you step in to strike but realize early that you'll end up out of range because your opponent is stepping back to create distance, you'll have already built the habit of not fully extending your punches. Let me know if you found this video helpful. Until next time, train well and thanks for watching.